at this place in history, we are not in Vermont, but I'm with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. So where are we? So Amanda, we're in New York. <laughs> we are right across the lake, but we're in New York. We're in Crown Point. And of course, this area has such a broad influence on our history in Vermont, New England, New York, you name it, but we're here. And we're going to talk about the French. Of course, we've learned that this area has a great history with uh, Native Americans and with the British and, of course, with the new United States. But the French were also here, and I think we don't talk about that a lot. So we've come here. We're standing on the bastion of a fort, and uh, we've asked the historic site manager uh, for this area, Michael Rotes, to join us, and he's going to tell us a bit about what we're looking at. So Michael, I guess I should say bonjour then. What can you tell us about the French and their influence in this area, how they came to be here? Samuel Champlain, of course, we, that's the name of this lake here. Uh, in 1609, made a journey down south. Uh, and, and we know he stopped on a point of land. He may have made it this far. He may have gone to a point further south. Uh, and in his uh, journals, he actually draws a, a sketch of, of this point and a battle that he actually had against uh, uh, some Mohawk Indians. After that, the, the British and the French were sort of competing for control of this lake. The French were, of course, north in Canada. The British were down at New York City and at Albany. And this sort of water route between the two was uh, contested ground between the two uh, large European nations. Eventually, the, the French got wind that the British were here trading, just across the way in Vermont, over on the other point there. Uh, which we call Chimney Point. The French decided that they needed to build a fort there. They needed to protect this area and they needed to stop that trading from going on. So they built a wooden fort just across the way. The wooden fort stood for about four years until the French decided that they needed to build something a little bigger and better. I think they were gonna initially build this uh, French fort on that side, but when they, they tried to build it, they realized that the bedrock was too shallow and it would cost them way too much money to actually try to erect this fortification in the area. So they moved across this way. At that point in time, they decided they were gonna expand the fort and build what we ended up getting here at Fort St. Frederick. Uh, we got the same tower they talked about building there and that was built right here. And then they built the walls around the fort. With the fortifications came lots of people and they had to live. So I think initially we probably didn't have a really enormous occupation here. You know, I mean, it's pretty harsh here out in the winter. You know, you initially had probably a couple hundred French troops here trading with Native Americans and encouraging, trying to encourage farmers to come. We understand that there was a settlement. We've got a couple accounts in 1749 that talk about anywhere between 12 and 30 farms that settled in around here. What was inside this fort? This fort was really an impressive stone fort. Uh, we think that it was, it was built uh, with high stone walls to really be impressive from the water from the Native Americans who were coming up and down here trading um, to really mark this location. It looks small and it possibly looks small because we've got an enormous British fort that was built behind us, but it was actually quite large. Uh, there was, would have been two barracks buildings in here, a number of storehouses, uh, this large tower uh, citadel structure that we talked about. This would have had at least 20 or 30 cannon mounted all on the walls. Uh, each bastion would have been fortified with cannon. Um, you had a chapel inside of this structure. So while you'd have soldiers living outside of the fort, basically, if it was attacked, you had enough room and space to bring them all inside. You could get a couple hundred soldiers in here to protect it. Uh, in 1759, uh, when the, the British finally amassed enormous troops down south and they were making their way north, the French decided that they'd better abandon this. They only had about 2,500 soldiers down at Fort Ticonderoga and up here at, at Fort St. Frederick. So they, uh, they burned Fort Ticonderoga. They came here and they uh, lit fire to this, uh, this citadel, their structure, and they blew that up. So um, that was sort of the, the, the biggest event here was them blowing up their own <laughs> fort and then retreating, <laughs> retreating north. So how can people come visit that and when? So the, the grounds to this site are open every day, all year round from sunrise to sunset. Uh, we have in the winter cross country skiing. And in the summer, we have a, a museum that can also be visited. And that's open from Thursday to Monday from 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. We're, of course, closed two days on uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Going out with a bang, standing on top of Fort St. Frederick in Crown Point, New York. At this place in history.